I'm Dave Klein, and this is the Simulate Cybersecurity Newscast. Just as we've seen a proliferation of criminal hacking and attacks in a market that has become mature, meaning you see among criminal attackers a diversification of specialties. You might be good at creating dropper files, or you might have an email distribution capability. You may have uh, reconnaissance capability, finding new targets for people to take advantage of, or you may be an affiliate to a larger ransomware group. The idea of this diversification has made these criminal attacks more powerful, something we need to think about. The same is kind of true for nation states. We now have a situation where you have private for profit firms finding zero days. Instead of turning them in with bug bounties, they're commandeering them and creating spy toolkits for anyone who has money. Right. In the past, with nation states like Russia, China, U.S., and others, you had to have a good deal of, of money, resources, and brain power to create all of these different attacks. Now, basically, you can approach a, another company to do it for you. So Google Threat Analysis Group this week re released a report about a Macedonian group called Cytrox. And Cytrox, in 2021, had done a pretty decent job of compromising with zero days, four, four zero days to be precise, uh, Chrome, Microsoft, and Apple Safari browser. This year, five new zero days, all around attacking and owning Android phones. Really fascinating study. I'll put it into the uh, notes section of the video. I think the takeaways here is this is something that's going to have major impact over the world and that even nation states now buy their spyware and their toolkits, and it means we need to be more vigilant. It's not actually a happy ending story here. My, my takeaways aren't positive. It means we need to be more vigilant, and that's the case, because we have not done a good job at policing uh, conventional weapons around the world. They just proliferate everywhere. And the same is going to be true for the spyware. So we'll have to be more vigilant and take care of ourselves. Sometimes patches cause problems. This week, uh, Microsoft released an out-of-band emergency patch for Active Directory servers because last Tuesday's patching window, they released some code that caused problems on Active Directory servers. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, their network emission control system called NPS uh, would lose contact and have uh, bad authorization to various uh, devices in the environment from cameras to voice FRP phones, to printers, things like that. And so it really, it really is a strong message to the world that before you patch, you need to have the ability to test in your environment and know what first and third party security controls you could put in to mitigate first before having the patch giving you time to test to make sure you're not going to break anything before you deploy it. One of my more interesting reads this week was Cardinal Ops did a study of 14,000 log sources of SIMs of all different make and manufacture around the world to look at how these SIMs were doing in seeing attacks that were occurring in the wild. And what was fascinating was the results. 80% of all MITRE attacks are never seen by SIMs. On top of that, of the top 14 types of techniques employed by adversaries in the wild, SIMs generally only see five. On top of that, 15% of the SIM rules they found would never fire effectively due to misconfiguration and other common issues. Really fascinating and really shows the importance again, I know I said this early in the broadcast, of doing testing, real world testing, using offensive techniques in your environment to fine tune your SIMs, your incident response plans, and your security controls to make them work in a better fashion. Really kind of critical and this study hits home on that. I'll put a link to it in the notes section of the video. Here at Simulate, we are the big champions of continuous security validation, of doing offensive testing in your environment to optimize your security controls, your incident response plans, and educate your people. And so this week we have a webinar coming up. I hope you all join us for it. I'll put it in the notes section of the video. Going over just that, the number one question I get all the time is where do we start? Where does my company start? And so we'll go over to four levels of experience in cybersecurity and which one is right for you. It makes it easy to roll out and understand. I think you'll enjoy it. We'll have a lot of examples and things like that. So join us in that webinar. I'm Dave Klein. This has been the Simulate Cybersecurity Newscast. Have a great week. See you next week.